Hi everyone. This video will be helpful for any ASIC farm owners who may need to install thousands of devices within minutes. I'll show you how fast and straightforward the connection process is, no matter how many ASICs you have. Just give it a shot, configure everything with ease, and start mining right away. Let's dive in. This is ASIC Hub. It's a time and cost effective solution that allows you to install as many ASICs as you have in your farm within minutes and use all the benefits of Hive OS quickly. Here's how we install it click on install now, choose the operating system that corresponds to whatever your control system is. I'm using Linux right now. So I'm going to simply run this script. I'm going to paste that in. And there you have it. All right, for the initial setup, I'm going to put the farm hash in for whichever farm I'm operating with. Paste that in. Click on continue. There you go. Hub registered successfully. You can now add your devices in the main control panel. Go to devices. I'll search for the IP address of the given worker if it's on my local network, and then add devices. For more information or for a deeper dive, go to the knowledge base at hiveos.farm slash ASIC dash hub. But let's take a closer look at the ASIC hub page. There's a full knowledge base page on hiveos.farm linked to from this page, keeps the warranty intact for your ASIC mining hardware, and then also gives you all the benefits of Hive OS and ASIC Hub. Allows you to monitor the hash rate, display the fan speed, show your temperature so you know what everything is doing at a glance. Also the power consumption, system status if you have any hash boards down or any systems down, and then figure out your load averaging across a single device, an entire bank of devices, or the entire farm. It also allows you to quickly configure several devices all at once. And of course, as you've been able to do for years with HiveOS, receive updates from your farm, either in Telegram or in Discord. So this can be configured to message you privately. So the status of your farm and the individual workers remains your business and your business alone, but contacts you wherever you are, either on your phone or your laptop or desktop, wherever you have these applications installed. The ASIC hub allows you to point all of your ASICs to your HiveOn dashboard, or there's the HiveOn ASIC firmware that allows you to flash new firmware onto ASICs, not at the same level of warranty, but it does let you squeeze that much more performance out of the hardware that you already control. So which devices does ASIC hub support? ASIC hub supports all of the following devices from Bitmain, What's Miner, Avalon, InnoSilicon, and eBang. If you don't see your model listed here, you can submit a request for the HiveOS team to add support for the hardware that you run. Just submit that request and we'll see how fast we can support your device. But let's take a quick look at how devices are displayed in HiveOS. Here's an overview from the HiveOS dashboard. Here are two farms, one without any ASICs and another one with some Litecoin mining ASICs or S-Script ASICs, as well as some SHA-256 ASICs. When I click into the overview, I can filter to see exactly just the machines that are online, just the machines that are offline, just the machines that may have some problems, and then also any that I've outlined as my favorites. But here I've got a T17, an S9, and an Avalon miner, which gives me my combined totals for my Bitcoin hash rate. And then I've got my Litecoin ASIC as well. I've got additional filters available to me on the drop down menu here, such as name, temperature, hash rate, all the way down to parameters such as invalid shares, recent errors, or offline time. If I want to tag some as favorites, it's as simple as highlighting them with a star. One of my favorite features of HiveOS is the ability to filter any of the mining rigs according to the flight sheet or the miner profiles. Let me show you what I mean. I might have miners that are running a specific mining software, or in the case of ASIC miners, they may just be running ASIC mining firmware. So when I press hide, now I can see all of just my ASIC miners. Pretty cool, right? And now that I've got this filtered view, I have the ability to, just using the browser, identify a bookmark. So just from this particular view here, once I've bookmarked this, all of the filters that I've put in place will remain intact when I revisit this URL. So it's worth looking into potentially bookmarking just filtered views of the mining rigs that you're interested in working on. For example, I may want to bookmark this view of just seeing ASICs. 
Using this browser, I'll simply click on the bookmark icon. It'll show me exactly which workers I have within which farm, and then it'll maintain the URL that keeps all of that information intact. So every time I go back to that bookmark, it pre-filters the view of these workers in this farm. Let's take a closer look at an ASIC that's being wrangled through ASIC Hub. Now this device has not been reflashed with any additional firmware. It's just using ASIC Hub, as you can see here by the Hub version. Here's a different ASIC on the same farm, showing an entirely different ASIC firmware, which is different from ASIC Hub. All right, let's go back to the Avalon Miner running via ASIC Hub. We can see that it's telling us the exact frequency per hash board, the voltage per hash board, the temperature per hash board, the overall system fan speed, as well as the stock firmware that it's running. We have some additional information that's important for us to know as well regarding remote device management. Remember, for your own operational security, if you think that your screen is being recorded, you should not mouse over some of this content. It's designed to reveal when you mouse over it. Here's some of the stats. We can see a seven day view. If we want to see all of this data at a glance offline, we can export a comma separated value file and then import that into our favorite tracking, plotting, or visualization software offline. There's quite a bit of control that ASIC Hub provides for a device like this. First off, we've got flight sheets that can be changed immediately. If we needed to launch a new flight sheet, it would be as simple as going through some of our favorites here, clicking on the rocket icon, and then confirming our choice. But additionally, we have so many tools up above. Power actions such as rebooting the device, shutting it down completely, seeing the server URL, passing a command through bash script, selecting a flight sheet from up here as well, editing additional tags for this device so we can filter our views at a glance and more quickly find this device, changing additional information, seeing the miner log, adjusting the miner configuration, stopping or restarting just the software on the miner, and then seeing the tuning log so we can see what changes have taken place over time as it's been in production. We also have the hash rate watchdog that if we did choose to turn it on, would allow us to define an amount of time that would allow the mining software to restart if there were problems, or to fully power cycle the device after problems if that failed to correct the problem. If the software restart failed to correct the problem, we could have the device itself power cycle after a predetermined number of minutes. And we can also define what we view as success for this device. Remember, not all devices run at peak performance. Some ASICs may be missing a hash board. Some ASICs may be damaged. Only the mine operator will know what the correct value is to place here. For this demonstration, we'll leave the hash rate watchdog off, but that's one of the many options. We can remove this device from our mine and from our HiveOS dashboard as well. Additionally, we can set a refresh timer for this page so that when we're sitting here and taking a look at some of the reporting for this device, we don't have to refresh the page manually. Or we can just refresh the page manually if we so choose. Here's some of the tuning options available to us. For this device, we can redefine the flight sheet, tell it the exact URL that we'd like for this device to run on, give it a template as to how it reads our wallet, our worker name, and what information is sent to the mining pool when we run the flight sheet for this device. Additionally, we can set a fallback configuration. In fact, we can set two fallback configurations in the event that something is wrong with one of these servers or something is wrong with some other parameter that we've set. There may be some additional configuration arguments that we want to place inside of this flight sheet or inside of this tuning sheet. As you can see, there's some suggested potential arguments that we might wanna put into this field. And you may know even better how to tune this device based on some of your own research and your own reading. But the sky's the limits here. If you know that you have some additional configuration arguments that can be passed through, you can do so here. Also be aware that ASIC Hub is not a replacement for the Hive-On ASIC firmware. If the Hive-On ASIC firmware were installed, we could have predefined overclocking profiles or overclocking templates that allow for a very easy one-click, high-performance operation of your ASICs. That said, ASIC Hub does not void any warranties that you may have in place for your ASICs, and it's still very simple to use and very powerful, as you can see. Here on the Activities tab, we can see what kind of access has taken place from different users of our mine, such as applying a configuration, transferring workers, sending a command, or creating workers. Depending on the different levels of access that you've granted to users of your dashboard, different permissions may be granted as well. For example, you may want someone to have monitor-only access, so they can tell you when a problem has happened. Or you may want someone to be able to alter certain overclocking profiles or tuning configurations to assist in your mining operation. Or 
you may trust someone at the partnership level to run flight sheets and change wallets for you. You have all of that control in the settings menu under adding new users. For example, here's the access tab from a farm overview. If we did want to add a user, we would click on trust user, put in their HiveOS login account, put in their HiveOS login username or email, and then define an access level. And as mentioned before, the different access levels offer different permissions based on that title. In the case of this mine, 2FA must be enabled for these users and the six digit code for 2FA must be input in order to add new account access. Again, from the overview page, we're going to just look at devices that are offline by clicking on offline. We'll notice immediately that this icon signals that these devices are offline, even when we're looking at all devices side by side. It looks like a Wi-Fi icon with a bang through the center. And where there would normally be temperatures shown for either an ASIC hashboard or for a GPU, there will be nothing because nothing is running. And on rare occasions, devices will show as being offline when there's been some sort of interruption to their signal to the dashboard at HiveOS, or there's been some sort of interruption to their power, or there's been some sort of an issue with the mining software running locally on that device. Don't worry, HiveOS, when it does communicate with the dashboard again, if there's been a catastrophic problem, HiveOS will signal to that mining rig that it should reboot the software first or a full power cycling of the hardware. ASICs will automatically reboot and continue mining once power is restored to a device. And the ASIC hub will also reboot. To start the PC running ASIC hub automatically, you'll need to set the option to start PC automatically after a power failure in BIOS. And the device running ASIC hub will automatically find all ASICs and transfer their statistics to HiveOS.